Okay, so I want to talk to all you homeschoolers out there, and I want to address this question right here. Who is teaching your child math? And the level of math that I'm talking about is middle and high school math because a lot of you out there are comfortable teaching your child elementary level math, and that's perfectly fine. But things are different uh, when you get into the more advanced math like uh, you're going to find in middle school, i.e. pre-algebra and beyond. So the question is, who is really teaching your child math? But really the bigger question here is who should be teaching your child math at that level? So we're going to take a look at this question, and hopefully we're going to talk about some information. Now, I'm kind of having this conversation with you on the other side of this video. So, you know, everyone's going to have their own different take on this, but I'm going to give you some really important, I think, general information that's going to help you kind of really determine whether you're using the best program for your child, for your respective goals for your child in terms of mathematics, because everything is not a one size fits all when it comes to homeschooling. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I've also been working with homeschoolers for many, many years. Uh, matter of fact, if you want to check out my full homeschool math program, just go over to TC Math Academy. You'll see the link in the description of this video. But I have middle and high school math courses, and everything from pre-algebra to pre-calculus. And uh, last year, I'm happy to say that we won one of the top awards in homeschooling in terms of mathematics. So we really have done some great work with homeschooling. So check out my program if you're interested. But let's get into this question now. Who is really teaching your child math? Again, we're not talking about elementary level math. We're talking about uh, high school level and middle school level mathematics. So this is the way I, I'm going to approach this question. So we're going to take a look at some common options. So the first is maybe school. Okay, now you're saying, well, homeschool, well, you're not really going to school. Well, yes, you could have like a little mini school or micro school that you send your homeschooler to, which is perfectly fine, or maybe an online school because homeschooling, you know, that's a big term. That's really education from home, but your child could be enrolled in an online school. So that's kind of one option. And I'm going to kind of circle back and talk a little bit more in detail about all these options here in a second, but let's just kind of look at them. Another option could be, you could be using like a textbook or some sort of um, uh, material that's like a workbook or again, some sort of combination workbook, lesson plans, textbook, basically some uh, paper material, or you could be using software, right? So again, uh, this could be different from a school. You could be using some sort of online software program. And now you could also be using a video-based uh, program as well. And uh, these um, different options, oftentimes there's hybrid approaches. So if it's a video-based, it could be video and software, and it could come with a textbook. And also a school could be using these, but this is kind of like the main um, categories, at least the way I like to think about it in terms of your options, right? But the, again, the question is who, not what, who is teaching your child math? So before we even get into that question, let's just kind of uh, talk about who should be teaching your child math. Well, let me tell you, I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree, but that's not what makes me a qualified teacher. I also have a standard certificate in teaching. So I had to go through all the education, you know, not only to get a degree in mathematics, which is pretty challenging, but all the uh, education uh, training, and then you have to pass a certification just to get into the classroom, okay? But even when I first got into the classroom, that didn't make me a good math teacher, right? <laughs> what makes a good math teacher? Well, experience does, okay? How many people out there do you know that know a subject that are like, you know, amazing geniuses in engineering or mathematics or anything else? They're great at that, they're great at that subject personally, but they're not the best educators. You see, education, when you know a topic, the key is can you communicate what you know? Can you translate all the complexities and teach things to students that are 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 years old? Okay, that's a whole different deal. So really, uh, a great math teacher is someone who has the qualifications of uh, a degree, 
and educational experiences and the ability to uh, communicate topics in ways that students like and understand that is very comprehensive, okay? So who should be teaching your child uh, middle and high school mathematics? Well, hopefully a math teacher, okay? You need to get a math teacher. I'm going to strongly suggest that. Now, uh, again, a lot of you out there are going to have different opinions on this, but who would know better, right? I, I've been working with students for decades, okay? And many of the students that I've worked with went off to top colleges. Many went off into the military or trade schools. It doesn't make a difference. You still want to have your child get the best math education possible, even if they're not going to college. And getting a great math education doesn't mean you feel good about what you're doing. In other words, you're like, I like this program. It's, you know, makes me feel great. You know, you like it. Your child seems to like it. And, you know, uh, you know, you feel like you're successful. But here's the thing. If you just because you feel good about using a program doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be getting the best math instruction. Oftentimes you're going to be getting a, a real basic kind of level of math instruction, which can be pretty detrimental to your child in the future. And okay? I've seen this over and over again. So again, the only way to really kind of assure that you're going to get a strong math education is to make sure whoever or whatever you're learning from was designed by a math teacher. Okay. And primarily you want to be um, having your child learn directly from a math teacher, full instruction. Okay. So when you think about how many hours of instruction a child gets, let's say in a, a typical uh, nine or 10 month public school setting, if they're a full-time student, you're probably talking like 180 hours of direct instruction, probably even more than that. It's a huge amount of hours of direct instruction. So, you know, when you're looking at options for your child, you know, you, you, you know, don't um, kind of just go by the reviews of program. Oh, other people said this program is great. Uh, you know, or this is the popular program. You're really going to have to think about what is it that you want for your child. Like if you really want a rigorous program, then you need to find something that's backed up by an actual certified math teacher, someone who's actually taught, okay, uh, in the classroom. I'm going to strongly suggest that because when you teach in a classroom, you get to be humbled by all the different types of people in that classroom, all the different types of students. In other words, you have students that are advanced. You have students that uh, don't like math. You have students that or maybe have some special needs. You have students that are bored. You have students that love math. You have students that... Um, you know, really struggle or have math anxiety. You know, when you're teaching, you have to teach this to the entire group, and that really requires a lot of skill and experience, okay? So that's what you kind of want to find. And if you um, check out my math program, my, it's been so successful because the way I teach is I really try to make things clear and understandable for all students, okay? And we've been very successful uh, with thousands of homeschoolers through the years. But let's go ahead and take a quicker look at each one of these, and uh, you know, uh, you know, you can't be successful with these various options. You just need to know what you're get what you're getting into. So let's look at the school option. So let's suppose uh, your child is part of a small co-op or maybe an online school. That's perfectly fine if you want to go that route. But you should, you know, be asking the question: Who is the algebra teacher? Okay, what's their qualifications? Just because someone's good at algebra, oh, you know. Uh, Mr. Jones is going to be teaching algebra. You know, he's really good at algebra and he might be a good teacher. OK, and I'm not saying that he isn't. And that's maybe fine at the algebra one level. OK, but there's a big difference between algebra one and pre-calculus. OK, high school mathematics. That's, you know, there's a lot of growth there in terms of how advanced it becomes. Pre-algebra is one thing. Algebra one's another thing. Pre-calculus is a very sophisticated math. And even in Algebra 2, it gets to be pretty uh, challenging. So remember, to be a high school math teacher in most uh, states, you need a degree in mathematics or math education. And that is not an easy degree to get. Believe me, it, <laughs> it, it's quite challenging because you're dealing with you know, uh, people who did four years of advanced math where your first year is calculus and you're going into some really advanced math. That's the kind of training or, you know, uh, background people that are teaching pre-calculus in like top public schools. So you want to keep that in mind. Again, 
who is a teacher, find out, okay, ask the question, who's going to be teaching this, who's going to be teaching this course, who's, the, uh, you know, um, going to be supporting that course, well, you know, the, the, maybe the school says, well, this teacher is um, designed the course, maybe it's a video-based course, but we have support uh, for, you know, our students, well, who is offering that support, again, who, who is going to be uh, providing the instruction, that is the main key. But again, you know, you can be successful with this, especially if you have, a, you know, a child that just loves math who can kind of learn, you know, do pretty good on their own. So again, this is a case by case basis. But I would say for most students, okay, um, they're going to need the support of a math teacher for sure. All right, let's take a look at the textbook option or workbook uh, options for homeschooling. This could be successful as well. Again, it's going to be uh, very successful for those students who already have kind of like a natural talent for mathematics, who just love math, who are going to read the book and really just kind of have the initiative to teach themselves. And there are those uh, type of students out there. But again, when you kind of think of a bell curve, right, if you're not familiar with the bell curve, kind of a normal distribution, who gets A's in the class? Well, this, peop this small group gets A's, generally speaking. And then, unfortunately, we have these folks over here that get F's and D's. Most people are going to be getting C's and B's in the class. These students, these A students, you know, you give them a book, they're going to be able to read the book and do fine on their own. This is kind of like those self-starters, you know, you give them an online uh, program or software, but they're going to figure out on, on their own. So if you have a child that's like that, you know, you definitely have more flexible options, but uh, you know, again, that is definitely the minority when it comes to um, those students out there, the typical students that are learning high school level mathematics. Now, let's take a look at software. But going back to textbooks again, um, let me just uh, follow up on my thought here. So if you have, let's say, you know, you feel like your child is kind of like an average in terms of mathematics, you still could be successful with the textbook option, workbook option, maybe have material from a, a, another child, just make sure you have some support, okay? So for example, my program, you can use it as a supplemental uh, thing. So let's say you like this, the way this program is set up, you know, the way it's uh, structured for grading and your records and whatnot, just find a program that supplements that, that offers that instruction. For, so when your child does run into problems, they have some place to go. So it could be a program like mine or maybe someone local a math uh, tutor, you know, someone that you might know that has that math background that can support your child. But the bottom line is you want to make sure your child has access to a ton of experienced, highly qualified math instruction, someone who can teach at that level. OK. All right. So let's talk about software. Well, software, you know, there's all sorts of different programs online that, you know, hey, you have, you know, a software program, you know, you kind of, uh, you know, your child's, you know, filling out multiple choice quizzes on some sort of software type thing. I'm going to tell you right now, I would not, I'm not a fan of just straight software program because that, that's not a, a personal thing. When you're learning mathematics, there's a, you know, kind of uh, a personal element involved in it. You should, again, the most important uh, part of teaching or learning, okay, anything is the teacher. Who is the teacher, okay? Not what is the material. So software could be, you know, software is, you know, becoming more and more popular. And if it's just software backed up with text, well, you know, that's not going to be the greatest program for most students, okay? And again, if your child is successful with something like this, a lot of the programs that I'm seeing out there kind of water down what the student needs to know. In other words, they feel good about it. Like, hey, you can solve this problem. 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. Therefore, you know linear equations. In other words, the examples and the practice is just not rigorous enough. Okay, so just because your child likes it or you like it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best thing for them. It's just like, um, you know, for me, I like donuts <laughs> and I can eat a lot of donuts, but it's not the best thing for me. So just because we like something doesn't necessarily mean it is good for us. All right. But again, software, there's different programs out there. There could be a software program. There's actually uh, many software programs out there that have a video component with it. Again, find out who is the teacher and how much instruction. This is another thing. Well, now let's kind of get into our next topic here, video, because these kind of cross over uh, with one another, is video-based. Okay, so video-based is generally kind of coupled with some software programs. 
And there's a lot of great um, teachers out there, highly qualified teachers that are teaching via video. But here is what I have seen, okay? The, uh, the lesson videos, okay, you know, are pretty small, okay? When you, when, a, when a, uh, a child is like in an Algebra 2 course and they're learning about quadratic equations, that full instruction, just the lesson, is going to be like 45 minutes, okay? Remember, they're going to be in school one or two days. They're going to be, at a minimum, learning a lot about uh, the quadratic formula, quadratic equations. It's a lot of instruction, believe me, because I've done it for many, many years. Then, they're going to go home and they're going to do a lot of homework. Okay. And again, that's a lot of hours. And then when they come back, the teacher is going, and this is for the most part, the teacher is going to review the homework or a lot of the homework. So what I've seen out there with a lot of video based programs is that you have a qualified teacher teaching, but here's the deal. The lesson videos are like, you know, like seven minutes long, and then they might do a few practice problems. That is not sufficient. What really that is, is like a tutorial program. Okay, and I think um, a lot of students see uh, a lot of video based programs, very charismatic teachers, you know, uh, highly qualified teachers, but it's not really the same as the amount of instruction you get in a school. Okay, in other words, a, a child, you know, at a top high school, you know, taking pre calculus or algebra two is going to be getting a ton of direct instruction from a top teacher. OK, they're not going to be given uh, getting little five minute, seven minute tutorials and little one or two, three little video problems as uh, examples. OK, it just doesn't work that way. So, again, if your child's in a program like that, they like the, the teacher, you know, and you feel, oh, this teacher is qualified. The next thing you need to do is it rigorous. OK, how much video is there? All right. So if you add up the total amount of hours of the videos, is it going to you know cover everything you need to know? Now, here's the deal. You ultimately have to figure this out for yourself and your child. And it comes down to what, uh, you know, what goals you want, you know, when you're for your child. Like, hey, is your child, you know, set on trying to go get into like MIT or Caltech or some top school, you know, to become an engineer? Or they're going to want to be in the most rigorous courses. And you can absolutely do it homeschooling. But again, when it comes to mathematics, mathematics is so, so critical. You want to have a great math teacher, an experienced math teacher, you know, uh, you know, directly involved with your child's education. That is so, so important. So my program, I'm pretty proud of the work that I've done. But, it, you know, of course, that's just, um, you know, I'm biased about my own, uh, particular program. But there's other good programs out there as well. Just make sure you do your research and really kind of don't go into like, don't, you um, just be, uh, you know, hear, see the marketing messages on these various programs. And, hey, we deliver this, we deliver that. Every program is going to sound great when you look at it. They're going to have great reviews and whatnot. Don't trust the reviews so much. Okay, the reviews are one thing. Okay, trust yourself. Have a litmus test and, and you know, a personal standard and just ask the question, who should be teaching my child, okay? And then who is really teaching my child if I use this program? Oftentimes, unfortunately, you can't find the answer to that question. And if you can't find the answer to that question in terms of this particular program, I don't know who's the actual math teacher or their background, then I would have reservations about using that particular program. Okay, so hopefully this video gave you some useful information. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe as I am posting um, a lot of different videos out there to help homeschoolers along the way in terms of educating their ch uh, children in middle and high school mathematics. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your homeschooling adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.